got a little bit of a problem with my uh, defender here. The uh, electric windows stopped working. Well, this is a TD5 door. <laughs> it's a Defender 300 TDI door at the opposite side, but I got this one second hand in England many years ago. And I painted it about, well, when I first did the truck, I can't remember what it was, 12, 13 years ago. Anyway, just out of interest, I stuck inside here. This is camping roll, closed cell camping uh, roll, and it's done exceptionally well. In fact, the door isn't rotten at all. I'm quite surprised, so testament for rust proofing. Keep your car rust proofed. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to test out what's, you know, it's just how to find out a fault. So, without taking everything apart, first thing first, test the plug. Now, I put two probes in, put it onto volts, and try the switch. Because all it is is a flip flop, it changes, up, it changes the opposite direction, and there's no current coming out of here. So, it's either in there, or there's something to do with the wiring. I'm not sure. But notice I've got the proper uh, Land Rover wiring harness. It doesn't go from here to here and, and stretches the cable. It goes to here, down to here. So when you shut the door, it goes almost straight. Can you see what I mean? I have had in the past wires break in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off this and have a look see if there's any wires it broken because it is it they do start to get stiff after a long time and uh, we'll uh, have a look and see what's wrong. So we're going to have to make some test leads with some little probe pins because my probes are too big they won't stay in whilst I need to operate the switch up and down. So. <clears throat> I buy a lot of these type of things, Prince's Auto, you get 10 for a dollar or something like that. They're really cheap and they're only low amperage, but they're good for doing test leads and especially in our condition, they're going to be nice, you know, because they've got a crocodile clips in, but they're not for high power. They're only for a quick flick and stuff like that. So, I've got one here that's already sort of broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a jumper lead and I'll show you how we do it. So I'm going to keep these, these I'm just in the continuity test. Because these are crimped over, they're not soldered, so they're not all that good. So we're just going to... Let's get straight. Here we go. Is that good? Yeah. So we're just going to cut them off. And I cut them off that long because I can use them for something else, you see. And now I've got two little jumpers here. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is before I put the, uh, the connectors on here, and these are them here, the little little pins that go inside another plug. You can get these from electronic shops. You see they've got a little thing on like that where your wire crimps are. I'm going to show you that in a minute but first of all we're going to put a shrouding around this to keep this together instead of getting all mixed up and unraveled. So let me find a piece of uh, heat shrink. Here's a nice piece of heat shrink. Better than taping. So we don't want it all... <clears throat> we don't want it all the way. We want it about to there. So we cut that off here and then I'm going to feed these wires through the heat shrink. Now we're doing it like that because it's a lot neater and it's a lot easier to manipulate. So we're going to strip off the insulation like that. There is not much wire in there. You see that? There's not much. Now we're going to crimp them on using this tool here and it's a really handy thing to have in your toolbox. It's, it's dedicated to do these type of crimps. Now sometimes you usually just put them on with a pair of pliers when they come off after a few days. But what we're going to do is just crimp these on. And I'm going to bend that wire back. Double it up. See that? I'll probably make a pause up a bit. Now, when you're doing these, the large tangs here go over the insulation and the small uh, tang grips the pipe, uh, the pipe, the wire. 
you'll notice if you I don't know if you can see these they're shaped they're different so this bit is the top and I marked it with a little mark here for the top now what I do is I'll just nip them in a bit make sure we're our wires there and then crimp that crimp that around the insulation and crimp it again there see easy isn't it? I'll do the other one and we'll come back and there's the other one can you see it nice so that means now that we've got a nice tidy lead and we can put that into we can use this for all sorts because now it can be put in quite safely and then we can put this onto the end of our leads of our um, uh, multimeter so there's our new leads probing the wire and now we've got the multimeter down here next to my beer and I'm going to operate the switch I'm going to push it for down now there we are 12.13 volts now press it for up 12.13 excellent so that means there's not a problem with the wiring it could be a problem with the motor so what I'm going to do now is make another test lead oh I think I can see the problem I don't even need to make one can you see what I see see the pin in here it's either corroded away or pushed back I've got a feeling it's pushed back and if it has that's going to make our life a lot more interesting let's see what we can do right so the pin had pushed back so I pushed them in I just want to make sure they're making a good connection so the next stage is to test the plug to make sure we're getting voltage out of here so we'll keep our eye on the switch on the uh, multimeter 12 13 12 13 or 12 12 so that means now if I plug that in if everything's okay we should be getting a, a window winder operating now I did remove the screws from here because I couldn't quite get to the plug so I'm going to have to have a mess about it to get the plug in but again I'll give it a bit of squirt with crown rust proofing just to make sure it's nice and rust proof and then we'll come back so does it work? it's always been slow going up shoots firmly. I'm happy with that. We're going to give this a good uh, spray this time with uh, well I don't know um, what's this stuff here? Fluid film. We'll spray all the locks because these things I've got central locking on this as well and it does tend to jam up a bit sometimes in winter. And get it get it all in there you know. Oh these locks the uh, crown's good for getting into little cavities, you know, so we're going to sp spray that on the top. We're going to spray this inside here. Get it in there. Down there. Because this door isn't rusted out, I don't really want it to be. All I've got to do now is assembled that so that is a very easy way to diagnose a problem all it was was a pin had jumped out of the connector hey ho it's fixed see you later